take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Hello, Gordon. Hello, mate. How's it going? It's very, very good. Very, very well, good. As we're saying, Wolverhampton, you always, right, mate. How's it going, kid? <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't speak like that on this recording because the Americans won't understand a Brummie that's, accent. That's, that's what we say everywhere. How's it going, kid? You all right? How's it going? It's all right. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can do a Bradford <laughs> accent. It's all right. I know you. What far? I want to do that. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I went. I said in my social media. Isn't it strange, right? How? Isn't it that strange how small we are as an island, but you've still got these interesting dialects, even from everywhere you go. I mean, there must be hundreds of them, wasn't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Now we're recording this on Friday, the thirty-first of May. At we started at nine minutes past eight British summer time. It's probably going to go out on a Saturday morning if I get my finger out. And I think we'll start off with uh, that criminal Trump. That criminal, that mega arch criminal, the worst, most criminal president ever. Oh, my God. He's going to prison for a million years for election interference. That's what he was guilty of. He's going to prison for a million years. And to talk Trump, the time has come. (laughs) The time has come. That's right. Because America, America is a country of law and justice. So, come on, what's your take on this? Because I don't think you're a fan of Trump. Trump as I am. They're going to start with Trump for the paying off of a porn star. And eventually they're going to get around to Bush for killing a million and a half Iraqis on a lie. And, a, you know, I suppose Obama, they're going to work backwards. They're going to go from Trump paying off a porn star to Obama doing all this stuff and the drone bombing and what have you. And no, 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 you can't say that. He, Obama was a lawyer. He can't break the law. He knows the law. He was a lawyer and he won the Nobel Peace Prize and he's smooth and articulate. And what was it Joe Biden said about about Obama that at last we had an, something like we had an, an, a handsome, articulate African-American? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I think they should start with Joe Biden and his uh, his corruption with Ukraine and China and his paedophilia. You think they're going to they think they're gonna go for that as well? I think they should start with the genocide that is enabling in Gaza. Yes. I think that's where they should start. Yes. I think the ICC should pull their finger out and start arresting, start sending, um, because obviously I, I I found out that Israel weren't in the ICC. I, I thought they were, you know. I know America weren't, but I thought Israel were. But they did a trick. It's not like the Israelis to do this, but they did a trick where they sort of were introduced into the United Nations and what have you. And that was the first thing I think that United Nations voted on. But they kind of didn't sign the ICC. They were accepted into it, but they didn't sign it. You know, you know how Netanyahu, you know, he accepted the Oslo Accords, but his version, uh, his interpretation of them, and that's the way they got around not ab- abiding by them. But, you know, they've set out arrest warrants now for him and Gallant. I think it's about time that Joe Biden, even though they're not in the ICC, and Rishi Sunak are issued with warrants too, and Ursula von der Leyen too. And I hear that there some there already is a request for Ursula von der Leyen by lawyers for the ICC to investigate them. Um, so, yeah, perhaps that's why Rishi Sunak has called this election, because he wants to lose it and then fuck off to America where there's no extradition treaty to the ICC. That's some people's. That's my friend Matty Matz. Well, no, I think I think okay, we're gonna be careful. Let's go back to Trump, right? And we'll come to the UK. We'll come to the UK and also anti-war protests and stuff like that. I just, I was looking at. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you. I was looking at Twitter. You know, you know about this, right? So I've just oh, yeah. tweeted this out. And I'm we were gonna, talking this a little bit off, and I remember this. So I remember yeah. the drone strike. I'm gonna this. link to this in the description below. And this is Robert Gibbs, advisor to uh, Barack Obama, back when Barack Obama was president. And she's saying to him that Barack Obama, she's challenging Gibbs on the uh, the murder, that the execution of a 16-year-old American citizen mm-hmm. that Barack Obama ordered by drone strike without due process. And his response, well, you know, if you're going to have an iris, fathers need to be more responsible and not join al-Qaeda. And if people want to know more, that's how they justified the killing of a 16-year-old American. But now that the U.S., is going to prosecute presidents 
for filing, you know, um, payments on the advice of legal counsel under legal expenses, then I think um, we'll come to that in a second. Barack Obama's time has come. And I'm sure all the Democrats, everybody, all the Trump haters, yes, at last justice, they'll be thrilled. I wish that would go away. They'd be thrilled to know that now Barack Obama can be prosecuted for this. Plus also uh, the destruction of Libya, the bombing of Syria without reference to the War Powers Act, that only Congress can allow war. Uh, the bomb bombing of drone dropped more drone bombs in Pakistan in the first hundred days of his presidency than Bush did in eight years without a declaration of war or anything. And then, of course, the bombing of Somalia and Yemen by this Nobel Peace Prize winner. At least he should be he should be done under some sort of advertising law for misrepresentation. <laughs> well, I'd also like to throw in there the unconstitutional spying of the incoming president, Donald Trump, with the FISA Act and crossfire, crossfire Hurricane. I'd also like to add that in as well. If you want to start, you know, prosecuting presidents for paying off a porn star, then we can we can obviously if you don't therefore prosecute, you know, people for other very similar actually things when you look at the law. Then it also it just looks like then you're, you're using the law to go after a political opponent. And that's not what democracies do, is it? No, 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 no. That happens in banana republics like the country of my birth, Pakistan, but not the United States. Definitely not. Right. Definitely not a banana republic. And um, the other thing you said about paying hush money, because now they, they're going to prosecute Bill Clinton, I'm sure, for paying what was it eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I forget the woman's name. Forgive me. Right. Uh, about an affair that they'd had eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars he paid i mean she got a much better deal than stormy daniels oh was it was it less than that that trump paid her yeah 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 how yeah. much was it you know I remember can't remember but it was less right now what he should have done is what hillary clinton has done which is she, this is from Babylon B, she condemns Trump for paying hush money to political liabilities instead of just killing them. Because <laughs> that way you get off scot-free. It's all right to kill your political opponents and, of course, spy on them. And it's all right to say there was election interference in 2016. Um, for her to say that because she's a Democrat, but not anymore because... The, you know, the DOJ, justice is blind. And um, let me see this one. This Oh, here it is. Here's the Babylon B article. And I shall link to this in the description below. Hillary Clinton condemns Trump for paying hush money to political liabilities instead of just killing them. <laughs> There's uh, even a list, isn't there? Somebody put, a, put together a list of all the people that died in mysterious circumstances around her and Bill Clinton. It's quite a long one. <laughs> just before they're about, and many of them just before they're about to I'm sure, I'm sure you're lovely, Hillary. I'm yeah. sure you're a lovely person. It was all an accident. He you shot himself you... in the head several times. Some of them have done that. <laughs> we were talking about this a little bit off air. Sorry, if you want, do you want to talk about that Babylon Bay article? Well, we were talking a little bit off air, weren't you? She was essentially found guilty of the same thing Trump's just been found guilty of, wasn't she? Because her campaign was found guilty of uh, paying Perkins Coey to be sort of a middleman to pay for essentially what became the Steele dossier yep. in opposition funding. And they filed it as, um, you know, legal expenses instead of opposition research. And she got fined one hundred and five thousand dollars. And there was no real um, hullabaloo in the in the court system or anything like that, you know, there wasn't millions of column inches written about it. And, but it was slipped in there under the, under the table and a $105,000 fine for essentially, I think, certainly one of the crimes that Trump's just been found guilty of. Yeah. And, and there, but there's also, also all the millions and millions of dollars that the Clinton Foundation can't account for. Gone. No, but that was all above board and there was no cash for uranium or anything like that. And well, uranium uh, one, okay, that was also above board. Are you a Trumper? Come on. <laughs> and the five hundred thousand dollars that Bill Clinton got from Russia, was it a Russian bank he gave a speech to or something? That wasn't Listen, Russian. And, and the Epstein Island was just a really nice, relaxing place to go. And to get a to get a painting taken of Bill Clinton in a blue dress. 
Who wouldn't want to go to Epstein Island for that? Very for me, mate. <laughs> See, there's yeah, no, so what, much when you scratch the surface, isn't there? It's like, come on, this is ridiculous. But Gordon, what I find so refreshing about you, you're much, much better than the BBC and the Guardian. <laughs> not hard. It's not difficult. <laughs> I mean, the, because the, there's such poor analysis. You are not a Trump fan. That's really clear, right? We've no. had this conversation before. But you are opposed to hypocrisy. You are in favor of the rule of law and can see that this is just lawfare of someone that you don't necessarily approve and it undermines the, the American state. Perhaps that's why I can drop a video quite regularly that has more more watches than the BBC nine o'clock news or Newsnight. Wow! Like I, I've lost count now of the amount of videos that I've done over the over the last year on TikTok, even with the censorship that I faced on there, uh, that have uh, that get more video more people watching than than Newsnight. And some of my videos are quite long, as you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, they, they, I've got a bigger platform and the reason is people trust me and not them. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I need to come on that. And I'm going to link to your TikTok in the description below because you do it about two o'clock weekday afternoons, right? Usually. Is that right? I, yeah, I, do, I mean, I, I go live usually about three times a week. I've got another ban at the moment for hate speech. Yes, oh. my, my stuff's hate. The, the, the algorithm thinks I'm hateful. Remember, the last time I got a ban, the algorithm thought I was racist because I said, thank you, Niger when Niger kicked out France and they thought <laughs> I was a racist person. Oh, so who knows why they think I'm hateful now? Well, you use the N-word, that's why, Niger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's so maddening because even with this, you know, and clearly, you know, an algorithm that's doing it, it's clearly not, it, it's still like way better than anything you'll get uh, on, on most of the platforms. I love it. I just love it. But it's so maddening. It really yes. is. No, it really, really is. Okay. Okay. Well, look, in the thing about the, I want to go through this with you. Uh, this is from Kanakoa. Oh, this guy's good. He's good. He is Kanakoa. Kanakoa. And this is the sort of analysis you won't get on The Guardian or the BBC, but you will on independent media. And Kanakoa the Great is probably a, a supporter of Trump, right? I think he's certainly got those sentiments, but then people could think that about me. Um, the judge donated money in plain violation of a rule prohibiting New York judges from making political donations to a pro-Biden, anti-Trump political operation. Uh, should have recused himself right from the very beginning. Yep. And also, I heard, Kenneco doesn't say this, but he actually wasn't on a list of of judges that were due to hear that trial. So there was some shenanigans. Going like... him. Yes. Alvin Bragg, the DA. Oh. I'm sure Keir Starmer wouldn't know anything about parachuting people, people into positions. But anyway, okay. that's a different story. Let's, let's concentrate on this one. Uh, Alvin Bragg boasted on the campaign trial in an overwhelmingly Democrat county. It's a fact that I've sued Trump over 100 times. It's completely partisan. Most importantly, the DA's charges against Trump push the outer boundaries of the law and due process. The charges against Trump are obscure and nearly entirely unprecedented. In fact, no state prosecutor in New York or Wyoming or anywhere has ever charged federal election laws as a direct or predicate state crime against anyone for anything. None ever. I mean, it's just pure election interference because they couldn't get him on anything else. And I understand from listening to Alexander Mercurius on the Duran and Alexander Mercurius is a lawyer that the what Trump did it was alleged to have done were misdemeanors. And somehow tiny, tiny digressions. Yeah, they had almost to... like um, filing errors, almost. Yeah, here it is. The DA inflated misdemeanors past the statute of limitations and electroshocked them back to life by alleging the falsification of business records was committed with intent to commit another crime. The DA. Do you remember when? Do you remember? Sorry, Rich. Do you remember when this first this story first started growing legs? This Stormy Daniels story. Oh, it was a few years ago when Trump was in power. Was, I think it was as far back as twenty seventeen, just after he. Uh, or 20, yeah, 2017, just after he was inaugurated. We had, at the time, right, we had the Skripal poisonings. Yep. And then soon was... after Julian Assange was silenced in the embassy. And then soon after that, there was the Duma attack, which was a false flag. And I've verified this. And this is not, this is, this was a false flag. All right. The whistleblowers have come out and basically blown the lid off this. And you had all that happen in a, a short space of time. And all the media in America 
wanted to talk about was Stormy Daniels. With all of that going on, yeah, all of that misinformation and disinformation, they concentrated on Stormy Daniels. It is no coincidence that this happened right back then, and it's no coincidence that it's been inflated and that it's still taking precedence over what could be the start of nuclear war right now. It's yeah. a gigantic distraction. It's a massive weaponization of the justice system. And quite frankly, it's the sort of stuff that America say other countries do. I'm going to leave it at that and not get too verbal. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, uh, the DA, Alvin Bragg, refused to specify what those unlawful means were. And the judge declined to force them to pony up until right before closing arguments. So much for the constitutional obligation to provide notice to the defendant of the accusations against him in advance of trial. It's basic stuff, isn't it? It's oh, basic. I mean, this, 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 there's even more that Kanakoa is not mentioning. Maybe it's in the article that's linked, right? But, but the judge was supposed to give written instructions to the jury. That's one of the rules. He didn't do so. He gave them verbal. Because if he gives them written instructions, then you have a record. The record of it. Of Ver verbal, it's interpretations of, of you know, yeah. written something you can go back and, well, okay, and these was the yeah. instructions. And he also said that if four of them find him guilty of one charge, another four find him guilty of another, and another four find him guilty of another, he'll consider that as a unanimous verdict. Which is what, also, on all three charges? Well, no, or... that, that he's guilty of everything. Which, and you... You have to be found unanimously guilty. This is preposterous. It, it's, Why aren't then... lawyers? Why aren't lawyers jumping up and down about this? Because think of the precedent, not the president, but think of the precedent this is setting. Yeah. I mean, you're going after somebody for paying off a porn star. Meanwhile, you've got literally his CIA director planned to kidnap and kill a journalist in the middle of London, and he's walking around like he's God. Yep. So why have you weaponized the war against this man? Weaponized the law, sorry, against this man. Why is this man your antichrist or Satan or whatever? Why are you going after him? What is so bad about him? Because if you say he's a warmonger, then I'm sorry. Even though I will correct people and say, yes, he did start wars. He was a warmonger. Things have gotten way worse under Biden. Oh, what and this is a progression. You know, oh, so why is it, why are you going after him so much? Why is it you're scared of, uh, about him? Are you scared? Here's what I think it is. He's not a globalist. He's not in the pay and the service of the WEF. He's a sovereigntist. And if you see the, the machinations by the WEF everywhere, they're all out to destroy sovereignty. That's why they're getting so terrified about what's happening in the European Union with this movement to sovereignties, which the mainstream media and the Eurocrats are characterizing as right wing. You know, Trump is this right wing, racist, fascist. No, the guy's a sovereignist. He doesn't want open borders. He wants to take care of the American people. Well, you can't be having that. I would make an argument that Joe Biden's further right than Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Joe Biden's the fascist, the, the one yeah. who didn't pay any regard to the Nuremberg Code. And he's certainly more authoritarian, so he's way more up there closer to Hitler, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. The, 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 uh, look, what, Trump didn't do anything in terms of what, when there was lockdown. He wasn't saying people had, there had to be mandates for the injections. He wasn't saying that everybody should lock down. He said, I'll leave it to the states. He, wasn't, he, said, he said there's hydroxychloroquine. He said there's other treatments as well. Yeah, bleach. That was a distortion. That yeah, it was, because what he was saying was bleach kills it. So there's something maybe we could work with that. And the scientists are looking at ways. And he was trying to interpret what the scientists had said to him. Yeah, bleach acts this with it. So we're thinking we can do this and this and this. And then he comes out with a sentence and the media run with it as if, oh, he thinks he's drinking bleach. No, that's not true. Yeah, no, no, everything, every, it, And it is, Gordon, that who the media attack are the ones we should pay attention to. Like yeah. Orban, like Corbyn, like, and like Trump, right? Like... Um, I don't know if they're actually attacking Bukele in um, El Salvador, maybe because it's not significant enough. But FICO, the Marie Le Pen, 
all the sovereignties in Ireland, I do a lot of coverage in Ireland. And when we talk about the state in the UK and who to vote for and stuff, then it comes relevant to Ireland, right? But anyway, back with this, the DA's employees called this the zombie case because of various legal infirmities, including its bizarre charging mechanism. But it's better characterized as the Frankenstein case cobbled together with ill-fitting parts into an ugly, out, awkward, but more or less functioning contraption that just might ultimately turn its, on its creator. But this is very, very clear. The Constitution says you have to have, was it the, maybe it's in the Bill of Rights, you have to have due process. You can't be killing people, American citizens, without habeas corpus, and killing a 16-year-old. That This is a really clear violation. So I can't wait for the DOJ to press charges against Barack Obama. And then there's also this analysis from, from um, Twin Tower City. Precedents established by President Trump. Presidents and former presidents can be impeached. George Bush, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton. Yeah. Come on. Presidents, presidents can Obama. be forced to reveal facts and business records. Oh, yeah. oh. Joe Biden. And his foundation. Joe Biden and his 20 shell companies to hide the payments he was getting wow. via his son, cool. Hunter. Presidents and former presidents lose executive privilege. Ah, so all those little girls that mm. Joe Biden has sniffed and possibly done more. He's not protected. They lose attorney-client privilege. Like, oh, my fucking God. Losing That's attorney. right. You know, isn't that one of those top things in law that they say is really important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is pure Stalinist. Uh, presidents and former presidents can be forced to release private phone records and text messages. Come on, Joe Biden. Come on. We want to see your messages and, and your phone records. Presidents and former presidents can have their homes raided by the FBI. Unless, unless they were guests of Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, yeah. I mean, None because of it, yes. obviously there was nothing done toward there and there was there's no stone that we need to turn. Well, even if there was, they're exempt by virtue of because it's just pedophilia and rape and child trafficking and stuff. Right. Now, by the way, I don't know if you know this. Right. But President Trump actually put in an executive order ordering the army to start dealing with child trafficking. Uh, yeah, I did. I did, I did yeah. That does ring the bell with me. Yeah. So now, something about for, me as a, for me as a child protection social worker, I've seen enough. I've seen enough evidence to suggest that Joe Biden is a pedophile. The last thing he would want, the last thing any pedophile want would want is to be exposed and caught out. Because there's so much revulsion against it. What was the thing with his daughter in her diary? Did so he used to put flowers with her or something like that? She, when she, was... she wrote in her diary a couple of things. One of the things she said that she... I think she, she she was 15 years old. She wrote in her diary about going to having showers in the evening after her dad had gone to bed because otherwise he came into the bathroom. She's 15. She talked about having showers with him when she was 11. And not yeah. right about it. And then she had this messed up childhood. And then Hunter Biden refers to him in his laptop, refers to his own dad as Pedo Pete. And then there's the there's the the videos on that were on YouTube and now can be found on BitChute of um hunt of Biden sniffing little children, sniffing their hair, pulling them. I've told you this before, you know, putting yeah. his hands under their breasts there. It's like that's grooming behavior. It's Tara Reed as well. Anyway, I believe, I believe have you heard about Tara Reed? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I totally, I totally believe her but her 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 she was a, account of events. University of Delaware, right? Yeah, she was like a staffer or something like that. And he, uh, according to what she said, he forced her up against the wall and basically put his finger inside her. He digitally raped her. And when she rejected him, he pushed her away and said, oh, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. And as he was leaving the room, he turned to her and went, you're nothing to me. You hear that? You're nothing to me. And um, you saw, I remember there was a a a... a a point in the last few months, if you look at Tara Reid's Twitter, she she will pinpoint this. But there was a point where the journalist asked him a question and he got rattled, right? And he he, he went like that. And she just tweeted, there it is. Yeah. And the records, yeah. universe, the records of that incident are sealed at University of Delaware. Sealed or lost, they can't yeah. be recovered. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I guess some people are more protected than others, right? Yeah. Well, not anymore, because presidents and former presidents can yeah, be well, yeah, by yeah. partisan committees. So at some point when the Republicans get in, should the United States stay as a coherent entity, 
you're going to have a, a Republican administration that's going to go after Democratic presidents. Presidents and former presidents lose their First Amendment right to free speech. This was appalling that he couldn't talk, that he was banned from speaking. Presidents and former presidents lose the right to a jury trial. Vice president no longer has authority to question validity of disputed electoral votes. Now, um, I don't know if you know the constitutional mechanism when there's a dispute, the vice president can refuse to certify. Okay. And um, Pence, Trump was talking to Pence about that because there was so much scandal and evidence of election rigging. I mean, no, no, no. You're a conspiracy theorist, an old man who spent the entire time in a basement, got more votes than ever in the history of ever. And if you say anything else, you're a conspiracy theorist and a kook and the BBC will come after you. OK, Rich? Are you on board with that, mate? I'm, I'm on board. I'm on board. It makes perfect sense that Joe Biden, <laughs> who had no platform, no vision, uh, where like less than 20 people would turn up to his rallies, if that many, right, got more votes than Barack Obama. And I'm sure it's just a coincidence that you can say that the 2016 election was rigged. That's no problem. And you can say that the 2000 election was rigged. That's no problem. But if you say the 2020 election was rigged, you lose your accounts on basically every social media in the world. I'm sure there's absolutely nothing to look at there at all. And that's just a coincidence. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Thank you. The losing party no longer has authority to submit contingent electors when results are disputed and presidents and former presidents don't have presidential immunity. Now, there's something else that you probably don't know about, which is the Brunson case. What's that? The Brunson case. Uh, it's Brunson Brothers. They are there. They've submitted this case to the Supreme Court and it hasn't been considered, but it hasn't been rejected either. What the, the law says, I think it's in the Constitution. Is that if there's any dispute about an election, if more than 100 senators or congressmen say, look, you know, we're concerned about the results here. They have to investigate before they ratify the results. There's no way around it. Right. They didn't investigate. They ratified the results without investigation. And the law is really, really clear. And it hasn't been rejected by the Supreme Court and it hasn't been considered. And my understanding of it and um, Jason it for he's done a few on um, Rumble and on YouTube. He's done a few videos about this is that. Um, you know, I suppose some things like the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment, it's really difficult to get around. But of course, tin pot dictators like Biden and Obama do somehow manage it. But usually when it goes up to the Supreme Court, they uphold the Constitution so far. I mean, even their their rejection of the um, abortion, Roe versus Wade, when they turned that over, from my right. read of it, they were doing it from the constitutional position that it's not the job of the Supreme Court to create new legislation. And the derogation of powers and amendment clause in the Constitution means that wherever possible, those decisions should be made at state level. It's not it's not for the federal government to make that decision via the Supreme Court, which is why they said it was a bad judgment. And so it's gone back to the states. So some states can have. So whether a state or not has whatever rules or agreements it has on on abortion is a function of the state governance, the state Congress making those decisions, which ideally properly is a function of what people vote for. So it decentralizes the decision making versus an unelected body like the Supreme Court deciding on abortion. Right. The Supreme Court, I know, are, are weighed down with a load of basically it's all it's all uh, company law and business law that they rule on. That's pretty much like 80, 90 percent of what they do. They barely deal with any of this constitutional stuff anymore. But, I can't but... imagine why. But this will this will come to the Supreme Court because there's still. Yeah, well, I hope it does. I hope it does because I mean, one of the things you've got there on the list is their presidents and former presidents lose their First Amendment right to free speech. Number nine. This is exactly what the UK have just ruled on. 
with regards to Julian Assange, and he's going to hear his appeal because they had assurances from America that when Julian Assange came to America, he would be able to make a First Amendment rights defence. And what America pinky swear to was he would be able to present that argument to a judge. So they're trying to deny First Amendment rights here, not just to Julian Assange, but to the President of the United States. And rightfully, the UK Supreme Court ruled that now we're going to have to hear this appeal because if he doesn't get First Amendment rights, then that's going to be a no-no and we're going to have to deny it. Well, here you can see plain as day. The ex-president didn't get them. What chance to an Australian who is going to be denied them on his nationality, which is against our extradition treatment, I think it's 61B in the UK, US. It's and a farce, mate. It's just a... And you know what I keep thinking, mate? Mm. It's like... My, a, a guy I interviewed once, Danny Shearson, great guy. I should I should speak to him again. I really should because he's a really good guy, ex-major in the U.S. Army. He calls them vampires. He calls these people vampires because I wonder whether the United States will, uh, actually understands how the rest of the world actually views them. And I wonder whether they realize that this reflects upon them really quite bad and whether they can see that reflection. You know, can they see what the rest of the world here is looking at? With yes. Trashing their own constitution here. I think the constitution is the wonderful idea. And as soon as the Americans get around to implementing it, the better. Yes. Yes. Very good point. Very, very good point. OK. I mean, it's a giant distraction, isn't it? Look at all the column inches that are being read, written about it. Really, is this the most important thing in the world? Is it really, or is it a big farce? No, it is important. It's very important, yes, and it's important that it gets the, the coverage that it gets. But is the coverage like this that we're seeing, mate, is the coverage just ordinary independent journalists picking apart the facts like this and presenting them? No, it's them creating the big show like a, like Chicago. It's, it, it really is. It's worrying. Well, I, 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 I think this is important because it is it is an, another evidence, more evidence of the destruction of, of the rule of law. In former Western liberal democracies. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not how they're presenting it, is it? They're trying to bring uh, pull the wool over people's eyes, I think. Um, I, I would say I'm, I'm totally on board with you and it's not something really I'd give much, much thought to. But they have certainly made a rod for their own back with these precedents that they've set. Absolutely. Well, um, I wouldn't. And worry. you and I are not Trump supporters. No, we're not. By, no, any, we're not. by any stretch of the imagination. But I'd like to. I think you and I would like to see Obama and George W. Bush and Biden and Clinton punished or prosecuted for their crimes for for their violations of the Constitution. I'm. I'm. It's honestly got to the stage now. Mate, where I know that they chant no justice, no peace, but it's got to the stage now where I would be quite happy to have an amnesty and just go, you know what? Let's let's not. And but let's just from this point forward actually have these set of rules that we go by. And we're not going to historically go back after everybody because we'll start cutting all of your heads off like French Revolution. It's got to the stage now where I'm willing to even consider just having that as an amnesty to go, okay, yeah, it all went on, it was terrible, but we're not going to do that going forward. And, um, you know, I'm I'm happy to have that sort of South Africa moment almost. It's not going to happen, Gordon. I totally understand that people who are going, yeah, we've got to prosecute these people, no justice, no peace. It's just, I just want the peace. Yeah, it's not going to happen, Gordon. It's going to get worse. It's going to get crazy and crazy and crazy. Well, and here's why. That way, doesn't it? Yeah, and here, here's why I've been thinking about this. And I had a conversation with Michael Leahy, the deputy leader of the Irish Freedom Party, a sovereignist party in Ireland. Um, and it's something that the left do not understand. The left wing don't get it. And I don't think you get it. I don't think Jeremy Corbyn gets it. I don't think, uh, you know, I didn't get it when I was immersed in those politics. Right. It was only when I began moved over and began to understand how Bitcoin, gold and silver are money and fiat currency isn't. It's going to get crazy and crazy and crazy. Well, and here's why. That way, doesn't it? Yeah. And here, here's why I've been thinking about this. And I had a conversation with Michael Leahy, the deputy leader of the Irish Freedom Party, a sovereignist party in Ireland. Um, and it's something that the left do not understand. 
The left wing don't get it. And I don't think you get it. I don't think Jeremy Corbyn gets it. I don't think, uh, you know, I didn't get it when I was immersed in those politics, right? It was only when I began moved over and began to understand how Bitcoin, gold and silver are money and fiat currency isn't.